What's going on everybody, welcome back. And I wanna do something a little different today, kind of talk about something that can be informative, but also a little bit funny as well. As you guys remember the top of the title on my video here is my top five Glock myths. There's a lot of bad information out there just in general. Now the internet can be an amazing place to get a lot of information. It can also be an amazing place, especially on certain forums, to get some really bad inaccurate information. And it's kind of up to everybody out there to sort through what's good and what's bad. But if you have questions, always go back to like a user's manual or something like that. Because there's even people out there that I've trusted in the past for training or something like that. People that I've actually worked with in some of the training staff before who were very misinformed about things. And it was kind of funny. And I'll get into one of those stories a little bit later. But I want to get ahead and get into a couple of these right now. Like I said, my top five Glock myths. Now this first one here is one that still plagues uh, range officers around the world, people and all that. They just don't understand the difference between some bad information that got out there somehow and somebody passed it off. And having talked to the training manager of Glock directly, he really wished he could have tracked down where this started because it kind of grew to the point where even myself, I used to get yelled at for doing this on the range. And that is using the slide stop for a slide release. So for you guys that don't know, that little button right here where my finger is, that's the slide stop. And it's also meant to be a slide release. I don't care what anybody tells you. You're not going to hurt this thing using that as a slide release. And I remember as a kid out on the range being younger, I used to get yelled at that uh, by some instructors out there. That's not a 1911. You can't use that as a slide release. Because it was always a 1911 shooter. And it just kind of cracked me up. I'm like, they put this part on a gun right there for me to manipulate it. Why would I not use it as what it seems to be its intended purpose? And I bring this specific gun out here to show because this is a very old duty gun. This thing is over 20 years old. Uh, it was a buddy of mine's that I had uh, asked to use it for this and I actually bought it from him recently. Um, but it's very old, it's got the original parts in it. Now there was some information out there that you could wear on that over time, but it's like a $5 part for armors and for departments and whatever agency you're working for. So using this is not something that's gonna hurt the gun, it's definitely something it was meant to be used for. And in fact, for those of you that don't believe me, here's a Gen 4, this is my own personal one, and look what they got right there. That piece on there is a Glock factory extended slide stop, slide release. They didn't want you using it for a slide release. Why would they make an extended one so you can use it easier as a slide release? So that is myth number one, dispelled hopefully. I hope we can put an end to that one, but something tells me it's still gonna be going on for years to come. Now this is one that is still plaguing a lot of places out there. And apparently from my understanding, years and years and years ago, there was some truth to this. And that was that Glock magazines need to be carried down one or down two rounds. Um, again, a lot of this information, I spoke directly to the Glock training manager, the leader of the training department out there, and tried to find out some of this information, where it came from, where it started. And he's been with them for, I wanna say like 15 or 20 years now or something like that. It was a former police officer, solid dude, really good guy. You could really tell he cared about, you know, getting right information out there. But it's really crazy to me because prior to that, I never carried a magazine down one or two before I got my first issued Glock. And I was told, oh, you gotta carry two rounds down or one round down. And I was like, why? It says, you know, this is a 45 for the 21. It says 13, why wouldn't I put 13 rounds in here? And then you can do the plus one if you want. Now my understanding was there were some uh, magazine issues very early on when Glock started to gain popularity and that's kind of where that myth grew out of. Also, uh, my metallurgist kind of guys out there, if I said that right, metallurgist, the spring wearing, um, what I was told by a couple of people that know metal a lot more than me is that carrying that down, you know, giving those rounds some round to breathe, you gotta take the rounds out on the weekends, let those springs breathe. That's what I've heard, I'm like, why would you do that? Um, it has to do with not the um, carrying them one or two down. It's just how many times that spring compresses and expands. My understanding was from talking to some people that know metal a lot more than me is that's what causes wear on the spring. It's just that repetitive use. And at the end of the day, springs are like $5, guys. If they start wearing, you start getting a bad round, get a new spring. For me, if I start getting bad rounds or anything like that, I generally mark the mag training because... They're like 18 bucks, so you can buy some cheap training mags out there, mag poles or ETS or whatever. So myth number two, got to carry a couple of rounds down. Total myth from Glock directly. Fill those bad boys up and have all the rounds you want in there. And do that plus one with an extension, plus 12 or whatever you want. 
although extensions are not really the best things in the world sometimes depending on which ones you get but they do work and they can be effective and myth number three and this is a good one this is what i fell into too when i first started getting into glocks because i was a metal gun kind of person and that is i wouldn't trust that thing it's plastic now i know all of us have heard that some of the old boomers the guys that love those uh snake guns you know the colt pythons and all those guns still believe in that well is it plastic yes and no it's a version of plastic it was actually i think called polymer 2. now for the use that for you guys that don't know gaston glock uh, is a polymer plastic kind of engineer he wasn't a gun guy from my understanding he came out with a product called polymer 2 and then somehow got into gun stuff and made the glock and now it's one of the most widely carried guns around the world but it's not technically a plastic, it's you know, a lot different than like a plastic toy you would have. So to give you the short scientific answer on what a polymer is, I guess, compared to like a plastic, a polymer is a kind of more uniformed molecular bonded material with nylon infused into it um, based on something called a monomer. So it's a little bit different, you know, it's kind of, you know, a little bit different than like a plastic, you know, like you think plastic, you think chingy dingy toys or something like that. It's quite a bit different and polymer at this point you know, especially the, uh, the polymer frame guns and stuff have proven themselves to be very, very robust setups and they work well. And like I said, Glock is probably one of those widely carried guns now. And then everybody else is kind of getting into that polymer market or has something in the polymer market. And that says a lot when people still think, oh, it's plastic. I wouldn't carry it. Well, sort of. So I guess that's not technically a myth, but people's belief of is that it's some crazy chingy dingy plastic, which is in fact is not. And then this is by far my favorite one. Uh, and I know I threw it in here in the middle and then I call this one the Nakatomi Plaza. And you guys already know where I'm going with this. If you've ever seen Die Hard or you know the Glock world or anything, it's that scene from Die Hard where he's yelling at that captain. He pulled a Glock 7 on me, which is a, a porcelain gun that passes through metal detectors. <laughs> okay, I was like probably nine the first time I saw Die Hard and it was a couple years after it had actually come out. My father owned a construction company. I remember working with him as a kid. By the time I was eight or nine, I could plumb houses and roof houses and do things like that. I remember watching the movie and I look over and I'm like, Dad, they really make guns out of the same thing our toilets are made out of? Because, you know, toilets and things like that were made out of porcelain at one point. And he just starts laughing. He's like, oh, no, that's fake. But there are literally people who still believe that this can be made out of porcelain and passed through a metal detector. There's, there's metal everywhere. I mean, that doesn't even make sense. I don't know how that ever, that urban legend ever grew, but anybody with any amount of brains in the world would know that you, you're probably not gonna be able to make a gun out of porcelain and get more than, I don't know, maybe one shot off before it just detonates in your hand. I mean, think about the, the pressure that's going on inside that chamber when that round goes off. It's just crazy. So that's definitely the most funny one of it, the Nakatomi Plaza from Die Hard. So to get back to the seriousness, this is another one that a lot of people uh, kind of maybe, I guess it's not like a starting a myth, they don't really understand. And that is the fully supported chamber. So by chamber, I mean, you're in here, you're talking about the chamber of the barrel and where that round sits in here. So you can see this is a live round. As you drop that in there, you can see the support that it has right there all the way around that, uh, that barrel. Now, some weapons have a more supported chamber or a less supported chamber, but what people talk about is if you have a detonation in here, what's gonna happen to that material, that round or that firing while it's in your hand? Now, what I can tell you is Glock has specifically designed this barrel and everything in there a certain way, the gas safety system, because if this round is a double charge or you have a problem and that round explodes in the chamber without pushing that round forward, or even if it does, if you have double powder or too much powder and this casing cracks or completely blows apart, that gas is meant to disperse downward through the magazine and it will blow the magazine out through the bottom of the gun. It will fracture the sides of it, but it was designed that way to save your hands because it's like the old firecracker rule, everybody. Hold a firecracker out in your hand like this, goes bang, maybe you get a burn. Close your hand around that firecracker and you've got a nub for life now. That's just how things work. I'm sure there's some scientists out there watching that can explain all that to me. I mean, it's common sense. I'd rather have something burn than explode. That's what's going on in here. And I can pretty much tell you their system works because I've had it happen to me. I've had a double charge round before, shooting somebody's reloads that I bought, and take a look for yourself.
And you can see there, that did exactly what it is supposed to do. Now I have seen other setups out on ranges. You can search YouTube videos and you can find a lot of, you know, double charge rounds or stay away from this ammo round where people have had detonations in the chamber. I've seen 1911s detonate before. Um, that was pretty scary because that thing just, I mean, the handles blew off. That dude's hand was a little messed up. Um, and then obviously on a Glock platform, that polymer is going to split and I had some pretty good bruising. I got the uh, locking block. I got a nice little scar right here. You can see on my up close uh, video sometime. That's from the locking block pin where it came out and went into my thumb right there. But it didn't do the damage it could have done based on how they've designed that. So I hope you guys liked uh, learning about this stuff. Like I said, this is information that I got from Glock directly. Um, I had a lot of questions when I went through an armor school um, and I was able to be lucky enough. They were training some newer people and the lead dude from Georgia had come out and uh, got a lot of the information to me, a lot of questions answered. So that was pretty cool. And uh, I do have that contact information. So if something does come up, I can always reach back out and get an answer. Um, don't know how long it's gonna take because they're busy over there. But one again, one of those videos I wanted to put out a little bit of fun with that not gonna tell me plausible myth and a couple other things out there, but a lot of it is just good information or information is spelled myths. And I'm sure there are people that are gonna disagree with me. So if you do, leave that comment down below and let me know where I was wrong because I'm not right on everything. This is just information that I got from what's a pretty trusted source, which is the manufacturer on why they did what they did. If you disagree with that, that's fine. I just wanted to put this out there. So everybody knows. So if you guys like what's going on here, hit that subscribe button for me. If you got a laugh out of the video, hit the like button. Remember to turn those bell notification icons on so you can get the notifications when the videos come out. Get out there on the range and have some fun. Dispel some of those myths and use your setup the way it was designed to be used. I will see you guys on the next one.